Thank you very much, Mr Chair. I, I, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to participate in the democratic process and, uh, sir, being an independent member of this House, uh, there is an anomaly in that uh, seven MPs in this House do not get the opportunity to fully participate in democracy in that we are denied the opportunity to speak in the readings, first, second and third readings of the bill. And so I look forward to the, these opportunities, these rare opportunities that I get to participate in the committee stage. And I thank you very much, sir, for this opportunity to rise to take a call on part one of the taxation, livestock valuation, assets, expenditure and remedial matters bill. And sir, I would say uh, how much courtesy matters. And a little bit of courtesy at the beginning of the week would, uh, would therefore see a lot of courtesy at the end of the week. And, and sir, I started off this week flying in from that uh, beautiful place called Tauranga where there's plenty of livestock and uh, I arrived in Wellington, I drove straight away to Foxton and uh, as I was doing that I was having my caucus meeting and uh, I, was, I, was able, I was able to get to Foxton and, and sort out some problems with some of the local people there that they had with a couple of dairies. And sir, so I came back, but whilst, whilst I was doing all of this, sir, I had no idea that this House would be going into urgency. I had no idea of some of the bills that were being rushed through and placed in front of Parliament. Um, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee didn't feel it necessary to inform me at all. And so I, I would stress that uh, courtesy uh, at the beginning of the week means a lot at the end of the week. <coughs> sir, and, it's, um, and, and to that end, I would say that it's very important that in the committee of the whole House stage, we do thoroughly examine the legislation that is before us. And I look forward to, after the dinner break, hearing from uh, members such as like David Bennett and their contributions. Uh, the taxation bills, which appear as regularly from the Policy Advice Division of Inland Revenue, as regularly, sir, as the passing seasons, are some of the most complex that we consider. And, uh, sir, they're thoroughly deserving of debate. Order, order. Could I ask the member to talk to part one of the bill? Because the member has had half of his time. Um, otherwise, it's an issue of relevancy. I call the honourable member Brendan Horan. Thank you very much, sir. Going to miss you. Now, part one comprises amendments to the Income Tax Act 2007, sir in clauses 3 to 61 of this bill. And I'd like to address several aspects of some of the provisions in these clauses. Uh, we are told, for instance, sir, that in the category of remedial adjustments, there are provisions affecting us, that is, affecting all members of parliament, sir, and that's why I, I brought up about the members of parliament earlier. And one is, and I'll quote, sir, correcting an unintended minor change to the tax treatment of allowances for members of parliament and another in clause 12, and uh, it's elsewhere too, sir, and again I quote, correct an anomaly arising from changes to fringe benefit tax provisions to ensure that the tax applied only to the private element of any payment or service provided to members of parliament under the Civil List Act 1975. And this would accord with the original policy intent, sir. And uh, I'm sure that's a relief. <clears throat> We're all heartened to know that the original policy intent will apply, and I can see the Honourable To Henere is uh, breathing a sigh of relief. And I'm equally uh, sure, sir, equally certain, that the talk in the cow sheds throughout the Waikato, where the Honourable David Bennett resides, and also in Southland and in every Darien region throughout New Zealand, now, this will be the talk, and the talk in the cosmopolitan clubs and the RSAs throughout town and country. The talk will be of nothing else but the original policy intent that will apply to members of parliament. Equally, sir, I'm sure that the press gallery will be riveted by this news. Patrick Gower and Corin Dan will no doubt, sir, be ready in their reports for the first stories in their 6pm bulletins. And uh, then later on, with all the other content, they'll be able to fill out their late news bulletins, sir from all the contributions after dinner. They will no doubt be including the changes also included in this part, changing the rules for livestock valuation. And so that will be important to the men and women in the cow sheds. 
Uh, sir, I will note that rules for livestock valuation were introduced just 12 months ago in that riveting budget, 2012. I mean, if you think this speech is boring, check out that budget. So this government, this chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. I call chair, the honourable Mr. Chair, Clayton Cosgrove. Mr. Thank, you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, all I can say about that previous contribution is I was chloroformed by that speech. Absolutely, sir. So, um, this bill. This